Welcome back with another episode of Possessing the Land. I'm here in my Southfield building, right off of Southfield Freeway. We're gonna talk about the difference between commercial and residential. So I'm gonna take you inside to show you a little bit of why it's important to go commercial and not residential. Go upstairs real quick. My vision for this property, I had originally wanted to do like a, uh, I wanted to rent it out, put tenants in here. And the second thing I came up with an idea, I was like, you know what, I can sell office space. I can make office space. I was like, uh, office space, nah. Then I got the idea based on talking to some of the guys, one of my business partners and stuff like that. They helped me spark the idea of actually opening up like a WeWorks, like where it's like workspace where people can come in and um, do their, have their business meetings there, have a conference room, have a photo shoot room. And uh, so this, this is what I want to make these rooms out of workspace, like um, the suites and stuff like that. We can rent, rent it out and make more money. And, you know, of course, everybody would share their restroom. So I'm gonna have a, a, a left restroom, a right side restroom and a right side restroom. The boy and girls are can make them unisex where anybody can use the restroom. That's each room, each space that I have, even when I do the WeWorks, every space that I have, I'm, I'm some membership. Let's say if I'm charging $100 to $50, $150 to $200 a month. If I got a thousand people who will sign up in that membership, that's some crazy money coming in, passive income coming in. So I'm thinking about, well, I'm not thinking about, I'm already sold on doing that deal where I'm going to be doing it for workspace. So that way I can have an office for myself too, because right now I don't even have an office for myself. I work out of home, you know what I'm saying? I work in my truck, my truck is my workplace. So I want to be able to have that nice, uh, found a nice, uh, you know, home where I'm able to do my work and stuff like that, use my computer. As you see, commercial is, is bigger. You have more, um, more space, and you also is more, you make more money when you're doing commercial. Residential, you make you know you may make ten, twenty thousand dollars with a flip. Commercial, you can make a hundred thousand to like a million, depending on what type of building it is. So this building right here, I'm able to make more if I would decide to go with the uh, buy and hold. If I if I go to decide like say if I wanted to rent it out each month, um, you you definitely need more capital. Let me tell you why. Well, this this property right here. Was well, seventy uh, one hundred and seventy thousand, and the comps are at. I can sell it for like three hundred and fifty thousand if I were to sell it like not really as is, but like do the small little repairs. I can sell it for more, a little bit over three hundred thousand. But to go back to what I was going to mention, I want to mention about how um, you would need more capital. Uh, like the difference between commercial and and residential is that you're going to need more capital. And the reason why you need more capital, you're looking at Look, this building right here is right off of Southfield Freeway. You see all these cars, you see the new development across the street, you see the stores, you see the, there's a lot of action moving on. So this, the comps, the value is like, it's up there. And it's only gonna get better over time. Every year, it's gonna, the, the, the value in this property is increasing. So, um, so when you, if you do decide to go into commercial, it's, you will need more capital, but it's better because you'll get, you'll get more of a, a bigger return. You'll get a, a greater return, that's how I should say it for lack of better words, a greater return. And, uh, and that's what I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm believing that that's what route I want to take. I want to go this route with, with uh, doing commercial more than residential. Residential is good, don't get me wrong, some good income, but commercial, you can't go wrong with it. Because whether you flip or hold, you're going to have some good money. Even you, especially if you rent, it's not no 800. It's going to be like 25, 3,000 to rent, depending on how good of a job you hook it up. And, and plus you can also add it in where people can, they will pay like a, uh, you leave it as is and you will give them like a, you create like a, some type of contract where they can fix up the work they want themselves. And then you can include that inside their rent. All right, there's a greater risk in doing, dealing with commercial. Uh, you, you have to think about it. It's a big building. You have to make sure everything is cold. I mean, electrical has to be ran right. Uh, your plumbing has to be ran right. Uh, you have to have it nicely secured because if, if you don't have this property secured and somebody comes in here and die, it's gonna be on you. You know what I mean? The city can shut you down where they, they'll, they'll put their 
mark the property down as a danger, endangered building. That's the reason why you see these boards up right here. Someone had broke into this property before I bought it. The previous owner that uh, sold it to me mentioned that somebody broke into this property. As you can see, the hottest bars are bent right here. They was able to break the glass and then go through this bar to steal stuff out of here. That's crazy. To invest in commercial, it's like right around, right around the city. You'll see signs that are, um, um, cause like, I'm gonna tell you this, you wanna buy off market properties. You don't wanna buy no property that's listed on the MLS. Now I say that, I ain't, I'm not down in my guys that are, uh, are agents because that's how they do, they make their money. Don't get, I'm not down in my guys that are agents. Me personally, how, if it was me, how I would inquire a commercial building, I ride around and I look for properties that look like they just been sitting up. You know what I mean? It's obviously they're not doing nothing with it. So what I'll do is I will get the, the address. I will go downtown at Wayne County Treasurer's office. I'll go up to the seventh floor. And then when I go up to the seventh floor, I will now go to the, the kiosk machine. They have it where you can type the address in to see who's the last deed of record, is who, who's the last owner. So once I find out who's the owner, I look up their name, I look up their address, I, write, I either write a letter, send it to them, or I'll, I'll go up to their house, put the letter on the door, or knock on the door and see if I can talk. I inquired plenty of commercial buildings like that, just by just going, driving around, looking at properties, and like, okay, this, is, this has potential. So I get a notebook, I write it down, or I text it in my phone, and then the next day, or that day if I have time, I'll go to the Wayne County Shredder's office, inquire about that property, and then negotiate from there. Once you get in contact with who the owner is, negotiate. But before you, go, uh, before you negotiate, you wanna make sure you get with your realtor that can pull the comps to see what, what the value is. And then also you wanna, you wanna look at, bring a contractor that can actually look at the bone structure, make sure it's a nice foundation, make sure everything is good and what it's gonna cost. You don't wanna go on there blindsided, that's how you get hurt. You don't wanna go into anything without numbers. You wanna have numbers. So. Yeah, that's how you acquire a commercial building. You can acquire residential buildings like that too. So you wanna make sure, get the address, go down to the Wayne County Treasurer's office, inquire, if there's a number in there, call them. If it's not, show up to that door. Hey, are you the owner of this property on such and such? They be like, uh, yeah, uh, are you interested in selling it? A lot of times they are, a lot of times they're not, but it's good, it's good, it's a good try. So that's how you can inquire them. And, and plus, sometimes some people post stuff on, on Craigslist, Facebook Market, and, um, and sometimes things be off market too. And you can negotiate on there as well. So there's plenty of ways you can acquire properties, commercial properties and, and residential. To share something with you too, man, you know, this property, um, you see these holes in the wall? Look at, look at the ceiling, look at the ceiling. These guys that bought the building, right? They found over, say $200,000 in the wall. So you, now you know why people been breaking in here. Because once the word got out there on the streets, everybody, because the guy practically lived here. He was wealthy, he was wealthy. His, his dad, his parents owned 5% of uh, Boston Edison. Like they were like, have they, that was like a, a stocks. They had 5% stocks in Boston Edison. So I'm like, not Boston Edison, what's it called? What's that light company? So like somebody called. It was something Edison. Well, I don't know. But anyways, he had five percent stock in that, and they had properties all over the Michigan. And so I'm about to inquire his other properties too from the brother. The brother's like eight years old, so I'm gonna try to get that before the brother transitions from this world, and I won't have any luck at all. But uh, but like even when we cleaned the property, I, I found some some gold. I found gold. I found coins. I found silver dollars. Cash out, I found jewelry, cashing them out. You know what I mean? So that money, that I, the stuff that I found and accumulated, even like vintage, I found vintage stuff where uh, people, uh, like signs and stuff like that, people were coming into the building to meet me to actually pay me cash for them. I'm talking about, I, I threw away hundreds of these banners. I thought it was trash, it was all wrinkled and old. And I'm like, what is, you know, but there were vintage banners. And with those vintage banners, People were paying me fifty dollars, twenty dollars for them. I was like, man, how, so what they selling it for? You know what I'm saying? So I made some pretty good change off of this this property just just looking through it. But that's why you see the holes in the wall and stuff, and you can tell it's purposely holes in them. Like, look at this. I'm just like, <laughs> so yep.
I think the room they found it in was uh the money in was this back room right here. Right up here. In the ceiling. Crazy, huh? Right here in the ceiling. So, so yeah, man. This is a very, very. Do you want to hide some money up there? <laughs> oh man, but that's that's what that's what I was I was told. And the guy got what he could out of it and, and told me to be on my way. He said if I found anything else, to split it with him. <laughs> it said to be. A million dollars unaccounted for in this building. So when I find it, I'm gonna come back to this film and be like, <laughs> no telling where it's at. It could be somewhere buried in the concrete. I don't know. I still got. It. So the, my plans was really to like demo this whole thing out so I can see. But I don't know, man. But they told me if I were to find it, if I can at least give the family in Germany a hundred thousand out of that. That's all they all they request. I shook the man's hand. I said, hey, if I find the best belief, you got my, my word. I'll give you 100000 out of that. Now, that's, that's what they told me. And I was like, wow. Because I know I'm a faithful giver and a tither, so I know that God comes and works in mysterious ways on blessing people. So that could be one of my blessings. So, yeah, but this is Carrie Lampe possessing the land. Make sure you stay tuned. Thank you for watching. We out. <laughs>